To thee we come, O Lord our God. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be world without end. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, we 
receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Gathered the proud in the conceit of their hearts. All their plans are brought to nothing. Forgive our sins of pride, that we may never despise our brothers and sisters, but in love embrace all people. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, as we gather this day, we offer prayers for the repose of the soul of our sister Jane Kanapaki into her eternal rest. And we ask for your grace and blessing. Accept her into your heavenly kingdom and bring us the consolation of all we trusting in your care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself more. The greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not into things beyond your strength. Search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm for today's service is, God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. God, in your goodness, and we have made a home for the poor. The just rejoice and exult before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God. Chant praise to his name, whose name is the Lord. God, in your goodness, and we have made a home for the poor. <coughs> the father of orphans and the defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. God, in your goodness, and we make a home for the poor. A bountiful rain you showered down, O God, upon your inheritance. You restored the land when it languished, your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided it for the needy. God, in your goodness, and we make a home for the poor. A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire, and gloomy darkness, and storm, and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words, such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion, and the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, by waiting and by calm you shall be saved, in quiet and in trust your strength lies. Lord, our God, our God of my life, abandon me not to their control. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The mind of a sage appreciates Proverbs, and an attentive ear is the wise man's joy. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to who sang in Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lower place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, When you hold a, a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors, in case they may invite you back and you have a repayment. Rather, when you hold the banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to them, Blessed are the humble, the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Words taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, verse 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, listeners to the Word of God. In today's Gospel, we find Jesus at a home of a prominent Jew, a leader of the Pharisees, sharing the Sabbath. 
The story continues that Jesus noticed how those who were present chose places of honor. It was in the days of Jesus that during banquets and important meals, the closer you were to the host of the banquet, the more important you were. Seeing this, Jesus creates a hypothetical scenario. He says, suppose one who is invited to a banquet presumes to take a higher place reserved for a guest of honor, and then if asked must move to a less honored place where they will be disgraced and embarrassed. However, if one chooses to sit in the lowest place and then is asked to take a more honored position, then this will be a credit to him. And so he gives us this teaching. Woe to those who exalt themselves, for they will be made humble. And blessed are those who humble them, themselves, for they will be exalted. We read that even at the Last Supper, there was a similar situation. In Luke 22 we read, And there arose a dispute among the disciples as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are called benefactors. But this is not the way with you. For the one who is to be the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader is to become like a servant. For who is greater, the one who reclines at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. This lesson of humility becomes so apparent in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John when Jesus gets up, removes his outer garment, pours water into a basin, and begins to wash the feet of his disciples. In John chapter 13, verses 12 through 15, we read, So when he had washed their feet, and taking his garment, and reclining at table again, he says to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. <coughs> if I then, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, so you also must wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you should do as I did for you. St. Paul's, in his letter to the Philippians, we read, Do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. He continues, Have this mind in you which was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count himself equal with God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, and how God hath highly exalted him. <coughs> the parable of the embarrassed guest is not just a piece of practical advice, but is also a great spiritual truth. We are all called to the table of the Lord, but we must not think of ourselves more highly than one ought to think, as St. Paul teaches but to think with sober judgment according to the grace that God has given us. In the second parable that we find in today's Gospel, Jesus speaks directly to the Pharisee who was hosting the banquet in his home. Jesus 
pictures the Pharisee giving a banquet to the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Those invited guests who would never be able to return the favor. This short and simple parable has a deep and a most profound message. It tells us that if one would receive kindness from God, then one must give kindness to others without seeking reward. It teaches that when one does good unto others, one will be praised and exalted by God. This parable also teaches that when one does good for others, who cannot give anything in return, it is God who rewards and blesses that individual far more than any man could. This also applies to those who feel unappreciated. In the end, if one does good unto others and not allow themselves to feel badly because they feel unappreciated, it should be remembered that in humility, the Lord appreciates one's kindness and in the end, isn't that what it really means and counts? My dear brothers and sisters, the parable of the banquet for the poor shows us that the kindness of God is directed to the humble and the lowly of heart. For it is in humility that one receives the grace of God. The humbler we are before others, the more grace we receive from God. God invites us to enter into his kingdom, just like that banquet for the poor that Jesus described. The Lord God has invited each of us this day to come into his home and to sup with him. Yet in reality, who are we? We are the spiritually poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, for we will never be able to repair, repay the wonderful grace and love that God grants unto us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the name of Jesus be praised, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not me, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born in the Virgin Mary, and he came in him. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. The Lord guides the humble rightly and teaches the humble the way.
Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, for the praise of the Lord for his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, grant that these gifts we now offer before you may become a heavenly healing and cleanse us from unseemingly our acts of pride through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, accept these gifts we offer to you in faith and trust. May this offering unite us with your Son's offering on the cross and bring us to eternal life. We pray this day for our sister, Jacob Kanapaki. May she enjoy eternal light. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. that we might learn from the teachings of Jesus to be humble and loving to one another. And so on this day, we join with the voices of the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and all your angels, as well as with your entire church. And we offer this prayer unto you, Father, as we pray most humbly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, Father, and Lord, Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the hungry and the homeless, for all abused and neglected children in our world, for all victims of violence, as well as all those who serve in our military, and armed forces and all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own for the hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you the living eternal and true God we join in communion with an honor above all others the memory of Mary the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, 
and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing to yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyfully save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took breath into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands. Again, he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord we pray this day. Amen. Lord, remember your servant, our blessed sister, Jane Konopaki, who has gone before us with a sign of faith and who now sleeps in peace. To her soul, O Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses.
through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant, grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our God. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not because for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy. 
that you should enter into my heart and only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I will say the word and I shall be healed. The body and the blood of Christ. The body. our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind, and then the deep of truth
Finally, all of you, be of one mind, sympathetic, loving one another, be compassionate, and be humble. The Lord be with you. presence of Christ in the Eucharist, give us a humble and tender spirit that we may think less of ourselves, more of others, and most of all to you, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May the prayers we offer this day for the repose of the soul of our sister Jaina Kanapaki be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Sacrifices are offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence. And the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of an only son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I welcome you to church this day as we gather in this most sacred place and we offer the sacrifice of the Mass. I bring to mind some of the announcements. <coughs> Following Holy Mass, Fellowship Hour in our parish hall. Also, we are scheduled of having the monthly meeting of the Ladies' Adoration Society of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Just a couple of other announcements. First of all, I wish to thank all who made our 90th anniversary so successful. The good Lord met us halfway and he gave us good weather. And so we are so appreciative for all those who worked and made the day so wonderful. I wanted to bring to mind that in the back of the church, we gave a very simple uh, remembrance uh, for our 90th, a pen that marked our 90th anniversary. And so, please, as you exit the church, take a pen with you, and every time you write something, look on the side and remember that on August 25th, 2019, Holy Name of Jesus celebrated its 90th anniversary. In, um, in my emails, I hope all of you were able to receive uh, a download um, that I received from, from Genek, Eugene Kulas, who took some wonderful pictures of our 90th anniversary, both here in church and over at the PACC. And I'm so appreciative to, to Genek for doing that. Um, we will be actually submitting later today uh, via email to the Prime Bishop so that this can appear in the next issue of Rola Bosha, the official organ of the Polish National Catholic Church. And I will also be submitting to Father Henrik Voss, who is the editor of The Messenger, which is the um, quarterly newsletter that comes out um, from the Eastern Diocese. Um, is there anything else I failed to mention? I think I covered it this time. Okay. Um, peace and blessing. And depending on what the weather is going to be like for next week, and I will be sending um, uh, not only an email, but we'd like to do something special next week for the workers. Um, we're looking at if the weather holds up, of having just an informal gathering. I've got a grill, we're going to put on sausages and hot dogs, uh, bring the lawn chairs where we can just kind of sit and enjoy. Um, and also, if the weather is not going to hold up, we've also talked of, of having, within the next week or two, um, after Holy Mass, a little bit of a, a, a brunch um, to, to thank all who gave of their time and their effort, again, to make our 90th so successful. God's blessings be with you, with your families, and now let us offer prayers for the living as well as for the deceased. The adventure of Flanius is Celestis. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the soul of our late departed sister, Jane Konopaki. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.